Welcome, foolish mortals, to another episode of the Hitchhiking Host Show. I am your host, your ghost host, <laughs> West Truth, and I'm back this week with another trending topic show. Well, uh, you know, a few months ago I started talking about some of the new rides that are making their way to Shanghai Disneyland, and of course, that park has been open for a little bit now, for a couple minutes, a couple minutes, a couple minutes. Um, so we were talking a little bit about uh, things here back at the States for a few weeks, and now we're going to go back to Shanghai Disneyland, and we're going to talk about one of their newest rides that uh, opened called The Voyage to the Crystal Grotto, and then I'm also going to tell you what theme park news went down for Walt Disney World this week. So, let's get to it, shall we? Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so, voyage to the Crystal Grotto. Riders board your boats, which is a larger boat with a skipper on it. Think more the Jungle Cruise than the Phantom Boats. And if you don't know what the Phantom Boats are, go back and watch my Hitchhiking Host Show 101 episode on them. But, um, the castle makes a great backdrop for this ride because it's like we're going through the gardens and the water around the castle, which is a pretty cool premise, in my opinion. Uh, mystical music begins to play, and narration begins. Don't ask me what they said, because I don't speak Chinese. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, he says something pretty, in a, in a pretty cool voice. We'll put it that way. As the boat go, ventures on, we begin to hear the music, instrumental music, all the way through, of Be Our Guest. As we come upon our first scene, of course, from Beauty and the Beast, and we see the figures of Belle and the Beast dancing. Lumiere, Cogsworth, Mrs. Pot, and Chip swing, or sway, not swing, from side to side, surrounded by fountains. There's a lot of water in this ride, so I suggest going to the bathroom <laughs> before you go on this ride, otherwise you're going to be running off that boat. And speaking of that, Mrs. Potts squirts water at the boat when you get when she pops her top. Um, <laughs> let's, let's keep this PG, shall we? Um, the, her teapot top pops up, um, and she squirts some water, uh, <laughs> which I thought was really cool. I didn't expect that. Um, then we begin to hear the instrumental music of A Friend Like Me, as riders voyage to the next scene and they see Aladdin on his magic carpet with the lamp in hand. Genie arises from the center of the fountain in the middle of the scene with his finger streaming water at the boat. Sort of like Travolta uh, in Saturday Night Live in a way, but with water coming out of it. Go figure. Um, and then we also see a figure of Abu trying to grab some treasure. Grab them cakes. Um, then we see brightly colored, oddly shaped topiaries and the dance of the reed flutes from Fantasia begins to play. The next scene brings us the Sorcerer's Apprentice with Mickey reading the spell book and broomsticks with buckets of water. Then we hear the song Now I See the Light from Tangled. We come upon Rapunzel and Flynn Rider in a boat. They're on a boat with lanterns in the background lifted up by fountains and then a projection of a flower appears on a large rock behind them. As we go along, the song Reflection from Mulan plays, as figures of Mulan and Mushu and a Chinese garden are seen. Next, we hear the Under the Sea instrumental, as we see, yes, Ariel and Flounder sitting in a large open oyster shell, along with many fishy friends spitting water. And the song Part of Your World plays as well. I want to be where the people are. I know. Drink it in, man. Drink it in. All right. <laughs> we begin to hear a little more narration. Um, and then we go into the cavern in the castle. We go, uh, the door is kind of open and then we go in. Uh, so then we're sort of supposed to be like under the castle type thing. We receive a projection of Tinkerbell flying through the cavern along with many fountains. Projections of crystals and gems on the wall then transform into the characters from the ride that we've previously seen while we're on this thing. Um, and then we venture back outside to the dock. And then that is all. So it's a very simple ride, but I thought it's a pretty beautiful ride as well. Um, you know, there's some people that 
aren't huge fans and they saw the video of this, but I think it's fine. Um, I'll talk a little bit more of that later, but the figures aren't the latest in tech. You know, a lot of people are like, these look like the figures from the Disney store. But, you know, they don't, not every ride needs the newest technology. They don't have to be the newest in technology because they have those at the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, like the Davy Jones um, animatronic figure in that park. Um, you know, but, you know, it's still enjoyable. It's a still an enjoyable ride. Dumbo isn't the latest in technology, and people still love that ride, so it doesn't have to be, you know. Um, it reminded me kind of an updated version of the storybook Land Canal Boats, um, which, you know, I enjoy those too. <laughs> Once again, uh, not exactly the latest in technology, but they certainly, uh, people love them. I enjoy them. I always go in the storybook Land Canal Boats when in Disneyland. Um, you know, this would be one I would go on for sure. Um, like the I like the use of the water effects. I thought the Mrs. Potts with her uh, top popping was definitely uh, a highlight. That that was great. It made me laugh. Um, I thought there were great music choices. You know, obviously, when you're picking these scenes out, you're like, well, I want to use this. We're, we're doing uh, Aladdin, so we got to use Friend Like Me with the genie, blah, 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 or Be Our Guest instead of Beauty and the Beast. You know, it, it's good It's good musical choices. Um, I, the, I thought the scenery was in between the, uh, from going to scene to scene was great. Um, no problems there. I mean, at least there's something to look at <laughs> in between going through the rides. Unlike, um, King Kong, <laughs> where it's just kind of nothing. Uh, and then you get to the temple. But, uh, before I get too many dislikes on this video, we'll, we'll pretend I didn't say that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a relaxing ride. It's a nice, you know, well, I'm, I'm about to vomit after I got off these Tron cycles. Let's go and do something relaxing. Um, like I said, people have said it's underwhelming. I don't think every ride at the park has to be a Tower of Terror or Haunted Mansion. Uh, with details, you know, I, I love, those are two of my favorite rides of all time. But not every ride has to be like that, you know. Um, so I think some are more family or kid oriented. Because let's not forget... Walt Disney World, Disneyland Shanghai, Disneyland California are have children in mind in a lot of these rides. They're not just for bloggers, <laughs> which I think a lot of us sometimes forget. Um, so, you know, children seem to love this ride. I would like this ride. So, you know, I'm giving it a passing grade. I think it looks fine. Um, so would I ride Voyage to the Crystal Grotto? That's what it comes down to. Would I ride the ride if I'm in the park? Yes, I definitely would. I would check this out. If you haven't seen this vi uh, ride, check out the video. It's on the internet. Check it out. All right, now on to the news. Disney confirmed this week the new show entitled The Muppets Present Great Moments in American History will be debuting this fall at the Magic Kingdom's Liberty Square area. This new show will feature interactive stories such as The Ride of Paul Revere, familiar characters such as Kermit, Miss Piggy, Fozzie, Gonzo, and of course, Sam Eagle, as well as an original song. A new character named James Jefferson, I thought they were going to say George Jefferson, Wheezy, uh, who's described as Liberty Square's town crier, will involve, be involved in the show as well. <laughs> oh, not that kind of crier, sorry. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I think this is a great idea. Um, it, it brings uh, more attention into Liberty Square. I know a lot of people were like, oh, there's actually going to be something in Liberty Square worthwhile. Um... Guys, you do realize the Haunted Mansion in Liberty Square. <laughs> that kind of brings some attention um, to itself. But <laughs> um, in other than the Haunted Mansion, you know, with the hall, around the Hall of Presidents, um, a little bit down further. This this is going to be going on. I think it's great. Um, it'll definitely get people over to the area. Um, to see what the heck's going on when they see the Muppets performing. Um, I'll be, I'll be definitely interested to see what this looks like. I'll definitely check this out next time I'm in the Magic Kingdom. Also with the Magic Kingdom, we have a couple more news, uh, news, uh, stories. Disney also confirmed that the new show, Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair, which I talked about a couple weeks ago, 
will be changing in just a few months. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Like other shows around the Magic Kingdom, the show will change slightly depending on the season. The first few changes coming in just a few weeks... Ay 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 ay! this year's gone fast. Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair will get ready to celebrate autumn. Or as I call it, the fall. <laughs> the show will then change again towards the end of the year to mark the holiday season. The seasonal changes will be big updates to, uh, not big, sorry, will bring updates, yeah, I just said that they weren't that big, <laughs> to both the music that is played as well as the costumes of the characters wear during the finale scene. It also makes it worth another watch if you're a Kingdom regular to see some of the differences. So, you know, if you're going on a trip, obviously, you're only going to see it, that version of it, um, and you don't go too often, you go maybe once, every two years or something then you'll get what you get um but if you're there well, re regularly with the season pass then you know oh okay cool that this is different that's different um i like that they do this like i said this type of show would be easy to do a little bit of changes to um i said that a few weeks ago and also speaking about the magic kingdom the nightly celebrate the magic castle show will be closing for refurbishment on august 5th and reopening on august 31st Though not sure what the closure's for, rumors suggest that the new projectors are being installed, which should bring the projection quality of this show up to that of Star Wars, a galactic spectacular, at Disney's Hollywood Studios, which we also talked about a few weeks ago. So, um, yeah, I mean, I enjoy the Celebrate the Magic Castle show. It's right before the fireworks. So it's like, well, if you're going to see the fireworks, you might as well go see that projection show. If you haven't seen it before, if you've seen it a hundred times, then, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, I think it's fine. It's fine enough. Um, so I'm, I'll be excited to see uh, what differences the show has, if any. <laughs> I'm sure there'll at least be a little bit uh, once it opens up again. Uh, now we're going to park hop over to Epcot. And though it was only a few weeks ago that the Sunshine Seasons in the Land Pavilion debuted a new breakfast menu, it looks like that was destined to be short-lived, as it was confirmed this week that this dining location would no longer be open before 11 o'clock a.m. So effective this Monday, no breakfast for you. <laughs> the breakfast Nazi is here. Um, I like the Sunshine Seasons uh, um restaurant in the pavil uh, land pavilion i thought it was fine um I, you know for lunch i've never eaten breakfast there obviously um but uh yeah interesting they sort of teased everybody like oh, how would you like our breakfast no you're not gonna get it so <laughs> if you're looking for breakfast go somewhere else <laughs> uh there's been a mystery stage up in epcot's germany pavilion for a number of months the mystery was solved this week, as we learned the stage will be used for a new live entertainment act. Beginning this week, Margaret Almer and the Bavarian Band will be performing at the stage five days a week. While it's expected to be a temporary act, if it's popular, you never know, its time could be extended. But who knows? <laughs> uh, we're just giving it a little bit of hope. Um, so if you're interested in seeing some German entertainment... Definitely check out the um, entertainment schedule and see when they're playing at the Germany Pavilion. Now we're going to fly over, literally, to the Flying Fish Cafe over at Disney's Boardwalk, which will reopen after its lengthy refurbishment later this week on August 3rd. Diners who return to the reimagined eatery will find a redesigned interior with an onstage kitchen and a more modern decor. An all-new menu has also been created by Chef Tim Majoras as well. Thanks, Tim. Um, so, yeah, I've never eaten at the Flying Fish Cafe. I've gone by it on a stroll through the boardwalk. Under the boardwalk. Yeah. Um, it sounds fine. If you're a fan of the Flying Fish, you can eat there again. So celebrate. Um, if you're not, then I guess you don't care. Uh, okay. And finally... So a little bit of oddball news this week. Uh, bro the news broke that Disney filed a patent for a machine that can take images of park guests' shoes to gather data and help customize visits. 
The patent application describes this as a system and method using foot recognition to create a customized guest experience. Disney representatives have said that there are no current plans to use the technology in a theme park, but as we've seen in the past, that could change very quickly. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, was this thought of by uh, someone with a foot fetish? Or, I... <laughs> um, yeah. Big Brother is watching, and I think I'll just leave it at that. Uh, you know, it might, it might be all right. I don't know. This, it just seems kind of weird. Um, all right. <laughs> that's all I got. All right. Well, that's the show. I'll be back with another show next week and also another Hitchhiking Host Show 101 where we're going to talk about the history of a Disney attraction. But until then, don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Hitcho Show. You can like the show on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Hitcho Show. Follow on the Twitter at Hitcho Show. And if you want to listen to the show or you are listening to the show, you can do so on Podbean, HitchoShow.Podbean.com. And you can also search for the show on iTunes or Stitcher under West Troop or the Hitchhiking Host Show. Until next time, don't forget to. for the next episode. See ya.